थैंक यू सर बाय द टाइम दे आर फिक्सिंग दिस पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन लाइक इफ आई एम अलाउड टू कमेंट ऑन व्हाट मिस्टर गुप्ता सेड लाइक एक्सपीरियंस इन द मिलिट्री एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ Iraq or fighting insurgency in Iraq and uh, like what we are uh, like dealing with in J and K, since we have dealt with this problem, uh, in my view they are quite uh, different, and the experiences of Iraq maybe will have only uh, like uh, little significance of how we are dealing with insurgency in different parts of our country. Nature like that. now sir <clears throat> to start with uh, my uh, presentation most of the things have already been covered and what i am planning to do is to give four case studies the cases which we have handled four cases of uh, major terror attacks in the country and how the technology both of the internet and those internet enabled communication technologies have been used in planning and carrying out those terror attacks so use of technology is uh, nothing new to the terrorist it has been happening since like a uh, post 2005 and starting from 2005 to say 2012 13 when the indian mujahideen terrorists were organizing mass casualty terror attacks at different places they were using technology they since in the initial times only the mobile phones were available they were using mobile phones to the best of their advantage because that was only their requirement that's what they needed a secure communication to communicate with different entities who were dispersed in different parts of the country and number 2 in acquisition of weapons and acquisition of explosives so to the extent they needed the technology they were using it since the very since very beginning and even today they are using the technology only to the extent it they need it they don't go into the most sophisticated ones so i'll be skipping many slides like these are all have been covered all covered now right now they the encryption that this has also been covered they are using it because this ensures them a secure communication this is a very very important part to sustain a terror gang or in organizing planning preparing a terror attack so that's why they use it now they the isis has published a document how to use different kind of uh, communication on social media what all precautions to be taken now this is a use of social media or use of technology rather use of uh, google maps to exactly show the places which needs to be attacked or the routes which need to be taken we have seen this happen in our own patan court attack case and i'll show a slide of that in due course of time now this these there are two slides which i would show to impress that how they depending on the requirement they have changed in we had two cases one arif majid case like four Uh, youth from kalyan had migrated to isi territory and at that point of time they used facebook twitter did not use any proxy anonymizer for internet access did not use secure operating system for traffic did not use additional encryption they did not need these things at that point of time see the difference in 2006 there was a very big module which was busted in hyderabad and all those weaknesses which were available in 2014 were taken care of because they needed this to happen because so many modules were getting busted because the security agencies were in a position to like get the information relating to their communications 
now for instant messaging has been the biggest problem for the security agencies and a very big game changer for the terrorist organizations so for instant messaging like chat secure by guardian project telegram by telegram messenger llp and signal private messenger by open whisper open whisper systems so we have found that within one and a half years they completely changed their how they used to communicate between each other now normal ip communication i think this has also been covered now one small clipboard if one wants to like really send through encryption that big encrypted message is sent which is very very difficult to now few cyber attacks have also taken place i am skipping those slides i'll give you example of this particular photograph this is a boat shaped bomb which was used in large number of terror attacks including delhi serial blast jaipur serial blast pune serial blast hyderabad blast and in large number of cases now this particular improvised explosive device was like it was developed by yasin and one of his associates pakistani associate his name was wakas he is in jail right now now bomb making is something which is which is a highly sophisticated job and as one of the terrorist was say uh, talking to us when i told him that do you bank on a bomb maker who has learned to make bombs on internet so he gave another example like it has been quoted in several uh, <coughs> articles also he said that will you go to a doctor who has learned his medical who has obtained his medical degree only by uh, reading material on the internet so state sponsorship or sponsorship by elements of a state in training individuals who can go and start from a different level now you have few individuals who have been trained Uh, re relating to the information the basic information relating to bomb making but the final thing has to come from the final action or the final training has to be given by somebody who has been trained by actually making bombs and exploding them so there it's a mix of technology and support from some trained group generally supported by elements of different state in in this particular case all the major players were in pakistan and still few of them are located either in pakistan or in afpak region so now this was uh, this was their signature bomb used with devastating impact now i'll give you another example on 17th of july 2013 Ten blasts, ten simultaneous blasts took place in Bodh Gaya. Bodh Gaya is the holiest of holy places for the Buddhist in the world. And three live bombs were recovered. All blasts happened between 5:40 and 6:05 hours. They they had timed this because at that point of time, large number of uh, devotees go to the temple. Now this person who has who had. arranged the attack who had masterminded the attack and had also planted the bombs and executed the terror incident he was a small time boy a, a very sincere boy from one of the schools in bihar he when he went to ranchi he got in touch with few individuals radicalized on internet self radicalization got in touch with few people and he was the one who completely learned how to make bombs from the inspire magazine online inspire magazine and through watching different kind of videos he perfected the art himself and then he carried out that act he was also responsible this particular person named hadar he was also responsible for causing six bomb blast in in a 
public meeting, large public meeting in Patna. So after his arrest, when uh, the investigators told him that how did you learn uh, to make bombs and can you show it uh, to the investigators. So the way he was like his fingers were uh, like operating while making the bombs, it was uh, like really surprising to see if that kind of expertise were there. Now I'll give you, sir, do you have time, sir? Okay, sir. I'll give this last uh, example. This is another example of an accidental blast which happened in Bardhman district of West Bengal. And here, a, an organization known, known as Jamatul, Jamatul Mujahideen Bangladesh, JMB was involved in that particular blast. And the use of technology, if I don't give you the uh, voice of this particular video, I am showing you one of the training videos which is of 30 seconds. You will not be in a position to distinguish that where it was made, who are the persons who are training there. I'm sorry that video did not uh, work. There you, you can see nine individuals in black jumpers with kalma written on their foreheads, the face covered, and they are being trained in use of hand grenades. Those hand grenades were manufactured in Bardhman only and they were collecting it for a larger kind of attack. And that was the, for the first time when we saw that even women almost semi-literate women were trained to assist, not only assist in the terror attacks, but also to actively participate in the terror attack. After the accidental blast, husbands of both the ladies were dead in the room and when the locals went to assist, they were not opening the doors and when the fire brigade personnel tried to break open the doors, they said, they were saying that if you break open the lock, we will blow the entire building and all of you were, will be killed. So all these things happened because of showing off pictures, online videos and all kinds of things in a hutman kind of a structure in a remote village in West Bengal. You, like when, you, when we saw those hutments, no one could believe that you will have a laptop computer, you will have the training manuals, you will have manuals listing how to dodge a policeman when you are confronted with them. So all kinds of things which are available on internet. Now sir, this is like, this is relating to Bombay uh, terror attack already, it has been covered. Now, we have handled David Coleman Headley case and I, uh, Now all those coordinates were fed into including, sir this is uh, the route followed by Patan court attackers from the border to uh, the Patan court air base. So they, were, they never asked anyone for their route. Everything was fed there and they were shown the Google Maps on a very big screen when they were getting trained and each and every landmark was like they, they knew where that land, landmark actually exists. So this is the use of technology like for planning, preparation and even for parts of execution reaching the actual attack place. You don't need anything else. Now you see uh, during the attack only they were talking to Jash chief, uh, members of Jash in Pakistan. Now just a day after the attack, the entire like a 20 minute, uh, 20 minute audio was uploaded claiming the responsibility of the attack on the, on the website. Now you see there is the last slide. A, in Handwara, in JNK, five terrorists were spotted and one of them was, though he was a Fidain, he was arrested alive. And from them these weapons and these equipments were recovered. And these are the wireless sets. These wireless sets have been converted into an equipment through which you can do SMSing where you don't have a mobile connectivity. 
that is called YSMS. So, like they have achieved that kind of sophistication and when we took the expert opinion, it was told that unless and until some military engineers or expert engineers are involved in converting those wireless sets, it is quite difficult to achieve that kind of perfection. So, that was the la last slide, sir. Like my last sentence would be like all the terror groups, particularly the grassroots terrorists, they don't mind whether the material is coming from Al Qaeda or it is coming from Islamic State or it is coming from Abu Sayyaf group or from anyone else. Anything is available, they will use it. They seamlessly use the strengths of different terrorist organizations. When it comes to counter-terror investigating agencies, there are so many hurdles. We have 13 international legal instruments, large number of bilateral treaties. But the flexibility which is needed to implement those elements are missing unless and until we develop joint task forces with uh, Bangladesh. We have outstanding relationship and we have worked very well. So, if such arrangements are worked out, then I think we would succeed. Thank you, sir.